listen, we talk about insider buying. The one thing I don't know if we talk about enough are buybacks, different than insider buying, but buybacks are on pace to top $1 trillion this year. Do you think the reduction, whatever else we face, will the reduction in available stock to buy with a huge surge in the cash available, does that mean the market's path of least resistance is still likely higher? It amazes me when you think about that statistic. I mean, I, when I look at markets today in terms of valuation, and I've been saying this for the past three to four months, is you know we are overvalued. But the problem is, is that's its problem if you want to call it. We're the you know the best house on, on the worst block in terms of where else you're going to go with your capital. And on the quality side, on the value side of the equation, there is some val more value in the markets relative to the high beta name. So. I think executives are seeing that, and that's why you're seeing some of that insider buying that you just talked about. Yeah, and, and also big-time buybacks. But on the other side of it, we're dealing a lot post-Fed, Phil, with obviously inflation. We've kind of half-joked that this is the year of, of digging stuff out of the ground. Commodities are up, oil, gold. So anything that you have to put a bulldozer in or a drill bit in to pull out is probably up in price. Are you still a believer and a buyer of major commodities? Yes, I am. So my my thought process is this, right? So in terms of this current environment, there is no playbook. I think everybody can, understands that. And you really need to use logic. As we think about it, every financial show that you watch, everybody's talking about is it transitory, non-transitory. For us, it's more about, okay, what part of this is transitory, which we believe the supply chain disruption is the base effect and the reopen effect are all going to be transitory, which can stabilize somewhere fourth quarter, first quarter, second quarter of next year. The non-transitory part, we believe, are the wage increases that we're seeing and the price increases that we're seeing, that which we believe will be, we believe businesses will not voluntarily reduce those prices. So we believe that'll be non-transitory. But the bigger problem, we think, is the long-term issues as it relates to inflation, which is the quantity of money that's been put into this system over the past 14 months, the the uh, the Fed that wants full, full employment, and that's going to be his focus, the massive deficits that we've seen, which has to be financed, which will debase the dollar, which will increase the cost of imports, which will be passed on to the consumer. And, and just overall, when you put that together, our thesis is that inflation is here to stay. We don't believe inflation will be like the 70s. So what do we do, Phil? We just buy, do we just buy gold? Just buy gold and let it ride? Yeah, so when you think about, what well, so if we're right about that, and inflation is going to be higher going forward than it has been historically, then the asset classes that historically have done well during inflationary times is commodities. Uh, gold has as well, but you've got to be careful with gold a little bit because there's a negative correlation to rates rising and gold going down. But ultimately, during rising inflationary environments, gold has performed as well. Are there any stocks out there that you like? Normally, we do like opportunity picks on Friday, but I'm off tomorrow. We can still do it tomorrow, by the way. But I'm not going to let you go, Phil, without maybe getting a stock pick or two from you. You don't like all of yeah. them, but I know you like some right. of them. So when you think about where we are today in the cycle, we believe that you know we could have probably the rate of change peaked in earnings and rate of change peaked in terms of economic growth. In that type of situation, you normally have quality stocks that will continue to outperform as you think about things going forward. And and, and triple M. Is, is a great business. It's, it's, it's boring, but it's a great business, great dividend, large, uh, great balance sheet. And in a situation where we believe the dollar declines, if you have a business that produces most of their 50% of your revenue or more overseas, you know, that could increase profits when the dollar declines. So we like triple M. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.